Hello everybody, this is the seventh episode of the Bible Online Learner tutorial series. In this episode I would like to focus on how to create vocabulary exercises. Now this uh, episode will come actually in two parts. This is part number one and I'll create a separate uh, tutorial or a separate video for part number two. Part number one focuses on vocabulary that is based on frequency list and on particular text that you might be working with. The second part will focus on um, making a vocabulary exercise that is um, working with a defined list of words or vocab that you've picked from somewhere, from a textbook or somewhere else that you want your students to uh, actually learn. So <clears throat> let's start with um, our tutorial here. So I'm already logged into the Bible Online Learner. So the first thing that you have to do in order to create an exercise is go to Administration and then Manage Exercises. Um, once you've clicked on Manage Exercise, you get access to the folder system. You can actually create a folder yourself. So let's do that. Uh, go to the bottom, Create Folder, and let's call this um, Bible OL Tutorials. Okay, so now you'll see here is my new folder. I can also delete this empty folder, obviously. Um, I go into the folder and now I can edit visibility. Always go to edit visibility because I always like to show the contents of my folder to everybody. So I click here that I want it to be visible to everybody. You can also um, define <coughs> which class of yours is supposed to get access to which folder. That's also a possibility. Okay, so good. Um, then uh, I'm now in this folder by Online Tutorials. Let me get back so that you can see this. Here's our tutorial, by Online Tutorials. Now I create an exercise. You click on Create Exercise. You choose, I'm now going for Hebrew exercise, so choose the Hebrew non-transliterated text. Um, and now you are provided with the option to describe what your exercise is about. So always, I would always suggest that you write shortly down what this exercise is about so that the student does not have any questions about it in this exercise. Um, let's say this exercise will be a vocab exercise where students need to uh, learn all the vocab of um, words that appear more than 500 times in the Old Testament, uh, in the Hebrew part of the Old Testament. In this exercise, you will learn all the vocab vocab that appears more than 500 times in uh, the Tenach. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so now the student knows what he or she is doing. Now we can go to the passages. Uh, if you are um, using a text-driven approach, that means if you are working with the students on particular text, you are now having the option to actually decide from where your vocab is coming from. For example, I, in my Hebrew uh, 2 course, I use, I will translate Genesis 19, Genesis 20, and I will also translate uh, Ruth uh, chapter 1. So I pick Ruth chapter 1 and I also translate Psalms chapter 3 and you see the system you just pick your you just pick your chapters from which uh, the vocab is supposed to come from for that exercise. You can then at the bottom of the selection you can actually unclick show locate checkbox in the exercise. Basically when you say don't show, no, don't show locate, the student cannot locate anymore where the text or where the word he's looking up is coming from. So particularly if you do graded exercises, I always like to unclick this so that the student cannot look up the text where actually the vocab is coming from. Then you go to sentence. Now in sentence, um, since this is a vocab dictionary, uh, vo vocab exercise, you pick the word level um, as the um, as the linguistic level on which your student uh, is working with. So word level, um, and you want to make sure that only Hebrew words are selected. 
So you can now go to language and there you choose Hebrew. So it must be Hebrew. So now it's only going to find words that are in the Hebrew language and those words are then um, presented to the student. And then you go to features and under features you can decide what you want what information you want to show to the student what information you request from the student so that is where the student has to put the answer in so let's say we want to show the text in which the word appears and then we want to actually show the lexeme you see here you have a couple of options for lexeme in total four lexeme consonants only lexemes transliterated lexeme and lexeme with variant. I always choose lexeme with variant because it shows you the homographs markers. So if you have a word like dabar, uh, which can mean word or pestilence or, or whatever, um, you, know, it, you have dabar 1, dabar 2, dabar 3. So these Roman markers, these homograph markers will be present when you click here on lexeme with variant. Um, so uh, lexeme with variant and then we want to request the English translation for example so request oh, not German request English um, good you can also decide you know sometimes at least um, at the seminary at Andrews where I'm teaching uh, students often know English and Spanish, so you might want to decide that Spanish is not shown. So don't show, I say don't show Spanish. So now the student, let's say don't show German and Dutch and Swahili, so now really no information is provided about any language um, that translates the Hebrew word. Okay, so we are almost done. We just forgot one thing, and that is now only Hebrew words are presented. But we said that we want to that we want to show only words that appear more than 500 times. So we have to add this restriction as well. So I go to the feature list and go to occurrence. So in occurrence, I now drop the low value. The low value would be 500 because we don't want to show words that are appearing less frequent than 500 and then you can add a high value or no value um, so in this case I add a high value there to let's say 2000 because I know all words that appear more than 2000 times they're so easy like the and or the prepositions le, min, ha, article and, and so on so I want to exclude those because my students know them anyways uh, and it's just a waste of time and they're not really learning the harder vocab. So I reduce it to a frequency of 1000. So we have 500 till 1000. So you see, I'm making sure that no word appears less than 500 times in this exercise. Then I click on save. I give it a name. So vocab exercise of hap words. Um, greater than 500, for example, save. Okay, and now the exercise is ready and you can make it available to the student. So let's test the exercise. An important part, always before you actually offer the exercise to your student, make sure that you test it first so that it really does what you actually wanted it to do. So we go to our folder that we just created, Bible Online Learner Tutorials. Here we have the exercise that we just created. Um, you can now decide how many slides the student is supposed to see. We clicked on 10, so it's 10 slides. And now we see exactly what we decided uh, in our exercise creation uh, template. So let me compare this so that you see what I'm talking about. Um, <clears throat> so on the right you have the exercise that is actually running and here's the feature. We said show text. Here's the text. So it's exactly the text that appears in the BHS. And then Lexeme with variant. That's what we wanted to show as well. You see here Lexeme with variant show. And then this slot is empty because this is what we request. English. This is what we request. Um, now to 
show you that um, this actually makes a difference. We could now say, let's not show English, but request German. So let's save our exercise. Save. Yes. And now we just reload our exercise here. Now you see, I need to put the German translation in here. So show answer, you see, now we have the German um, uh, glosses that need to be added here. Or let's go uh, further and show that we could say, show, um, so we go back, request English. We could now say, you know, let us also request from the student, um, for example, the um, gender. So we request the gender of the nouns as well, of, of the words as well, if available. Um, so now we do save, save, and we reload the exercise. You will see now an additional entry for gender, af, father, our father, so show answer, you see, English translation father gender would be masculine. Okay, I hope this was uh, helpful. Um, if you have any questions, please drop them in the comments below and I'll try to respond to them. So in the next part, um, it's an additional video, I will show you how to create uh, vocab exercises that are built up on selected vocab lists. Okay, see you next time. Bye.